I'm trying to think of other teachers, because, yeah, I had the... I had the, uh, the three cheerleading teachers that were pretty bad. Oh, shoot. I, I remember, like, I think the first session of this, I talked about how... 8th grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade, all of my teachers had been cheerleaders that obviously, you know, stopped being cheerleaders, needed some kind of future, and went into math teaching, and one of them was at least good at it. One of them was awful. Oh, God. I, I guess we're gonna... Oh, quest of the bike rack. Right, right, right. I totally forgot about that guy. I forgot about my 11th... Not my 11th. My 10th grade math teacher was awful. She mostly taught from the book, which for me actually worked perfectly because I learn really, really well by doing and learning from the book more than a person most of the time. Oh, I haven't traded with this guy yet. Uh, oh, it's just these. Because these are all just neutral minions. Yeah. Uh, let's see. But what was I going to say? So specifically, 10th grade math teacher, she was the oldest of the ex-cheerleader math teachers that had, you know, gone into teaching at this specific school or a set of schools. And one day I was talking to her and she was talking about how she didn't use a mouse when she used a key uh, computer and she was having trouble. And I'm like, oh, so you do everything through the, the command prompt. And she's like, no, I just don't use computers. And so I had to guide her step by step through uh, how to open up a web browser using a mouse. And she kept, like, taking her hands off the mouse and switching just back to the keyboard and trying to, like, navigate using, like, arrow keys or just, like, refusing to even touch the mouse or use it. I think it's because she's probably afraid of, like, rodents, maybe, and just made that mental connotation and was old enough to not be flexible enough to, like, realize that that's insane. Let's see, you were a high school math teacher. I'm assuming you were ten times more functional than this lady was. Uh, and I did great in the math class, but, like, holy shit, trying to... Uh, having that, like, weird confrontation. Confrontation? I mean, that, like, uh, situation of being like, oh, you are just completely technologically illiterate. That's a serious problem. Because... Uh, how the hell did she keep up with grading and a bunch of other stuff? And the answer is probably she just did it all by hand or something. I don't know. I feel like uh, baseline for people, there at least needs to be like more technological literacy classes taught by people that are technologically literate as opposed to taught by ex-shorthand teachers and whatever random student teacher that they could find from a college graduate program. I don't know. We we need to hire budgets for these things because holy shit, it it is sad when you like walk into a class and you're like, oh, I know more from just like dicking around on the computer for my entire teenage years than this teacher ever has learned in their entire professional career, and that's spooky. In the earlier days, it was harder to find people that were knowledgeable. Yeah, but this is like two. This is like the late two thousands, like two thousand six to two thousand nine, two thousand five to two thousand nine. I don't know. But it just, yeah, bothered me. Uh, let's see. What was I going to say? Right. The last story about this specific teacher. I'm just going to be talking about, uh, I, I'm just going to be talking about weird, bad teachers that I had through the years. So this 10th grade math teacher lady who couldn't use a mouse, uh, every Monday we would spend 15, 20 minutes just talking about what we did over the weekend because she didn't really want to teach. And, uh... I just remember, uh, I was talking about how I'd seen Night of the Living Dead over the weekend and thought it was kind of hilarious, but also terrible. And she had made some kind of joke about Night of the Living Dead. So I made a, a re like I flipped the joke and, and, you know, referenced the movie at her. Because she'd made, she'd made fun of Night of the Living Dead, so I had assumed she'd seen it. So... If you've ever seen Night of the Living Dead, one of the first lines in the movie is, They're coming to get you, Barbara. Because it's, uh, Barbara and her older brother in a graveyard, and there's a man just, like, stumbling around, and the guy says that, and then gets killed by the guy stumbling around in the graveyard. And that's the start of the zombie apocalypse. This teacher's name was Barbara, and she told me to leave class for the day and not come back. And I was just like, what the hell kind of 180 is this? You make fun of the movie, I make a joke back, you don't kick me out of class, what the hell is this? I went to study hall and did all of my homework for the week, because, like, who gives a shit? But, I have weird issues with authority, and almost all of them came from the teachers in my life.
At some point, we'll talk about the math math lawyer teacher. It's a lot of math teachers that gave me problems. No, a lot of teachers in general. Don't tell us her name was Barbara. Oh, it was Barbara. That's why she was so mad. Like, her name was Barbara. I forgot I uh, forgot to mention that. That's probably why she got pissed off, but at the same time, like, she had signaled that she'd seen the movie before. She certainly was old enough. They've talked about the lawyer math teacher in the number four. Yep, there's other things. There are other things. But the number four is the one that stands out the most. I think the last time I talked about that was Rain World. So I think it's about time that I can tell that story again. Anyway, nice wheels, kid. Check out the chrome. Thanks, not bad, right? No touching the chair. That's cool. I just want to look. I heard you gave Bruce a sock in the jaw a couple of days back. He got what was coming to him. I heard you punched a tooth out. And the teeth are in short supply here. Alright, well, nice meeting you, but I have to find a f I have a friend to find, so... Whoa, kid, slow down. We got a job you can do while you look for your friend. Stefan and Gordy have some super rare Power Pets cards, like... Uh, uh Chikeda. Chikeda? You gotta... Yeah. Cicada, probably. Is that how cicadas is spelled? No. What the hell is a cicada? Okay, it's it's probably just... We'll see when we get there. Because, yeah, I was like... It's not a cicada, because cicada is, is, does not have a CH, so I don't know. Anyway. All the kids play Power Pets? They like to trade? Yeah, rumor has it that they really want to trade one of... Or trade one of these brake discs. Bike Cobran. You can't get them in West Dudsdale. But we can't talk to them ourselves, Jess. We're from East Dudsdale. You know how it is, Jess. Actually, I don't. What? Where are you from? I live kind of near here. A central Dudsdalian. She's neutral. Perfect. Here's the break disc. Nice and easy. Go and trade. Go do the trade and bring back a Chikata card. It looks like a weird messed up Dota. Uh, Dota. Donut. God damn it, brain. Sorry, I saw that everybody saying Cicada. It could be a, like a chicken Cicada, but we don't have any bird decks in this one, so I don't really know. Anyway. Sure thing. Make the trade, get the card, see you soon. Okay, so we gotta go find the West Dudsdale gearheads. Wherever they are. Uh... Is it Stefan? It's Stefan. All the way over here. Yeah, messed up Dota's brain. I was lucky with teachers all through my school life. Admin, though. Some terrible people. Yeah, we had one school counselor that wasn't sending out people's applications. I think I... I did fine, but I know... I knew... Uh, I know I had a number of classmates that actually, like had to go in with their parents to yell at this lady because she wasn't sending applications off. Which is a problem? I don't know. Anyway. Hey, new kid. Aren't you the one that got that kitty game banned? I don't want to talk about it. So, uh, this chair is no gear system, right? That's right. That must be pretty tough going up hills. It's hard, but that's why I have these ripped biceps. Ha! <laughs> so what are, you, what are you doing all the way over here in West Dudsdale? I have this Bico brake disc, and I I know you guys want. And I know you have a Power Pets card that I'm after. Us? Play Power Pets? Nuh-uh. No, sir. We would never... You know, huh? She knows too much. It's suspicious, Stephen. Gordy's right. How can we trust you? Trust and respect go together like peanut butter and jelly. How about a game of Power Pets? If I win, you gotta trust me. Makes sense? Alright, let's see how you do. How's everybody craving donuts as a result? I haven't had a good donut in a while. I should find, like, a good donut place around here. Everybody says, like, Voodoo Donuts in Portland, but, like... I don't think Voodoo Donuts is actually that good. You're in for it now. Don't get ahead of yourself, new kid. Okay, well...
Uh, let's see. So we've got Needler. Yeah, we might as well just go for beef, beef inverted. The Gloodle? Uh, let's start with the Gloodle. I remember putting this card in my deck. Okay. Well, this is a bit of a mix. Uh, let's see, so what do we have? I could do the cat. They're probably going to murder the Gloodle, so I'm just gonna put that down. Then we gotta start murdering. No, none of these guys have Swarm. I'm gonna just kill the Earster Bunny. And one of the Pip Squeaks. Get them off the list. Oh, that makes him pissed off. I didn't even know, uh, think of that. All right, whatever. Doesn't matter that much. Okay, so that's going to make one tanky Invertus. I might want to start beefing that one up a little bit. Assuming it survives. Uh, ne uh hmm. Now it's not going to survive long. Let's just make tough Gloodle. Question is, do we, what do we have? I got four. I guess let's pinch her and just mess up one of the the dupe mice. Kill it, it'll piss off him, but that's okay. And then he doesn't have any defenders, so I can just kind of hang out and do whatever I want. Okay. Ooh, that's the good stuff. Let's keep buffing the Gloodle. And I've got five. So let's put down Thicket Basilisk and Gloodle. And honestly, probably should have just hit Valor. But for the most part, I'm just going to whammo his... Yeah, I, I did this in the wrong order, but that's okay. Okay, so Valor is, Valor is a little bit better than I gave him credit for. Holy shit. Oh, there goes that. Okay, so what do we do? Let's probably start buffing that one. I've got six. We should probably put down the Splode and Cat. Okay. So I should, for the most part, actually just aim for Valor. Because that actually... So, admittedly, that turns most of his guys into defenders, which means I'm going to have to clear everything, but that's okay. I explode. But this is okay. He's going to pretty much clear out his entire lineup. Uh, let's see. Probably keep buffing that Gloodle. Get a Smolder? Oh, damn it. Well, that... does... nothing. It's okay. It is okay. He feels more dangerous at high health than low health. Yeah. I'm pretty much in agreement there. Okay, Zapper and Pointer. What is that? Oh, right. Zapper's, Zapper's really stinking good. I guess let's kill the Invertus. Oh. And... Cat kills Semi-Cat, and then Gloodle kills Valor. And that's how the game's played. <sighs> you got the skills alright. But yeah, he's absolutely way more dangerous at high health. Low health, it's more of like a weird stopgap solution. You're alright, kid. And I want to do that... Uh, I do want that break disc. Let's trade. Okay, return to the gearheads. Oh. Shit, that's a good one. That's, in fact, exactly... That's exactly one of the cards that I want. But yeah, it's a Chihuahua Cicada. You are completely correct. Oh, well, we're trading it up. I don't need it that bad. Uh. 
You're back. Do you have my card? Here you go, Billy. Nice. We have a reward for you, kid. A really great reward. The best kind. It is... Friendship. Huh? You're kidding, right? This is serious stuff. You'll be so happy that you're our friend. Trust us. I don't have a choice, do I? Nope. Yeah, it's fine. It's not like my my deck is particularly tied by that one. That said, I want to get my hands on one of those, if I can find somebody with it. Because yeah, spawning a 3-3 minion every single time that thing attacks, that worked pretty damn well. Because that circumvents one of the main limitations of this game, which is uh, how many cards you can draw in a round, which is one. And it's not like some games where you draw up to a certain limit. Uh, let's see. Persecutor. Nope. And yeah, they don't have anything anymore. So unless it's... Oh, I don't know what Karen has. But yeah, I'll, I'll likely get another chance at one of those. But that, that thing is really good. What's she got? Testudo. I care for none of these. I don't think Nebraska had anything either, so we should probably just progress the game. Morph charge. Blood spore is per actually pretty good. But no, I, I don't care. Alright. Uh, let's see. So Timmy Spike. So we want to go talk to Brandy. Brandy? Brandy. Have you seen Jacob? I barely ever see him. I never talk to him. I don't even know his whole name. It's Jacob Pilgrim. Your locker's next to his. Oh, that's nice. I hope you find him. Me too. I'm getting nowhere asking kids around school. Jacob didn't even have friends. He spent his whole life in the... The library! To the library. Of course Nebraska doesn't have anything wander. It's a state full of only corn. I think we even avoided Nebraska on the way... When we were driving here cross country. Edgar, have you seen Jacob? I heard the announcement. I wanted to take a look around, but Principal Harding says I can't leave the library. Not even for a missing kid? Is there a worse Principal of the Year award? I saw Jacob in the playground yesterday after school. I was taking, well, I was outside taking my break. It was kind of weird. I never see him hang out there. He was snooping around the shed. The shed! He couldn't have gone missing there, though. There's nowhere to go missing to. You're probably right. I should go check it out anyway. I guess. Thanks, Steve. Jacob was last seen in the shed. Check it out. Jacob. Where the hell is the shed? I guess, easy answer. Shed's over here. Sop spike by spike. I should look up. And see if we have any corn mazes nearby. Because that would actually be a kind of fun thing to do. I've done it once with my old co-workers. Well, and nobody's noticed this. Huh? These are Jacob's cards. Ew, they have goo on them. So he did investigate the goo. Maybe someone saw him. He dropped his cards and then ran away? What? Some of these are all ripped up. Who would do something like this? Tragic. Ah, huh, wait. Maybe I can do something with these pieces. Create a new neutral mutation card from the torn pieces. When you have no cards in your hand, deal five or more damage to the enemy champion in one turn. Hmm. Some of these are actually pretty good. 1-1 one, one mi minion with lethal and charge.
Maximum food sounds way more useful, because this one would be nice, but most of the time my enemy has almost nothing. I think this is good. Uh, let's change top, though. Yeah, no, Blood Frenzy is probably the most useful one. And yeah, I don't have any other ways to get max food most of the time, so this actually is pretty good. No way any any kid will believe that I ripped up good Power Pets cards. Even to make a new one. Thanks, Jacob. You're gone, and you're still helping me out. So Edgar was right. Jacob isn't here. Where could he have gone? Oh, yeah. I'd scroll down. Nope, nothing. Here she is, Principal Harding. Very good, Mr. Dorkoff. Miss Carter, follow me to the cafeteria right now. Whoa! I know, right? You guys were dragged here too, why? I have no idea. These were the students you saw destroy the cafeteria? Yes, Principal Harding. It was Jess and her freaky friends. What? Well, what do you have to say for yourselves? We didn't do it. The whole darn system's against us. Jacuse. What does that mean? Oh, I don't know. I heard my mom say it once when she was mad. You will all have detention. Tomorrow, during lunch, you'll clean up this mess you made. Ha, ah, serves you serves you right, losers. You too, Mr. Dorkoff. What? You're g going to give me detention? Me? Why? You observed five students destroying school property and only told teachers after they had finished. Sorry. What you were just saying, Mr. Dorkon, serves us right? It's more like that karate movie. Dork on, dork off. Dork on, dork off. I'd better be able to eat off this floor tomorrow. The janitor should clean it. It's his job. He doesn't need to learn a lesson. Plus, a sudden influx of custodi custodial duties around the school means he's too busy to clean, clean up this mess. Is the principal really going to eat, eat off the floor? Yeah. I can't believe I'm stuck cleaning up this mess with you freaks. If you didn't make up lies about us, you wouldn't have gotten in trouble in the first place. Ah. Oh, this is just peachy. This, uh, got trashed pretty quick and nobody noticed. Well, where do I go next? Oh, I see. We could go home with somebody. Cedric or Sam? Well, do we spread friendship around? What do you guys think? Spread the love or hang out with Cedric? Or it seems to have broken on me. Okay, there we go. Let's see, why not both? I can only do one. Let's see, because yeah, I have no more quests. I could maybe trade with people, but I, I think we're... We're out of luck for the day. On anything else other than... Because yeah, we can't hang out with... Anyone. Yep, so do we do we spread the love? Or do we hang out with uh hmm. Do we like one of them more? Not really. We actually haven't hung out with Sam, period. Why don't we just hang out with Sam? I don't know if there's a reason to specifically hang out with one versus the other. Are you doing anything after school? Apart from digging a hole in the ground and hiding from my parents for infinity, no. Ooh, can I come over to your house? Why not? Might be the last time I ever see another kid, or the sun. We're going to spread that love. You what? It wasn't me. It was the others who were fighting in me. Jeopardize phase two, not to mention our entire operation. Sorry. I don't know why I thought you could do this. Should have carried out the recon myself. 
Maybe I'll just send you back to- Wait, I have information to report to. During the day, there are many more tiny, weak humans we can use. You're telling me that you actually brought back some useful intel? Hmm. Then we can move forward with phase three. Vessel collection. I'm glad it came over. I don't need to tell my parents what happened yet. Or was that I don't want to? I don't know. Anyway, this gives me time to... He's got one of those weird hamster superplexes. And that is a zippy hamster, too. Let's see it go by. It only goes by occasionally, but there's something that just goes... Zoosh. Yep, there it goes. But why is it going outside? Because it's insane. I had I had a friend with one of these. And it went out it did go outside too, now that I'm thinking about it. And it would loop down and into the living room. And also I think his sister's room. And the hamster I think his hamsters had a really, really short lifespan. Like hamsters already have pretty short lifespans. It's like two to three years tops. And I want to say he went through about five hamsters in the five years that I lived in California. Maybe more, because every time they were different, they were different colors, they were different shapes, and they all just would hang out in, like, one nook of the tubes and never go anywhere. It looked awesome, and I wanted one bad, but... Then one day I was just like, wait, hamsters are kind of screwed up, because I had another friend that had hamsters. And he bought two female hamsters thinking, yeah, they're not going to breed, no problem. Well, he bought them pregnant. And so, suddenly, both of his hamsters gave birth to, like, a bajillion little little jelly beans. And he's like, what the hell are these? Oh, they're babies. Oh, God, they're eating some of them. And then, like, two or three days later, they were already breeding with the offspring or something. It was, like, hamsters are, are ready to go within, like, days. It's freaky and uncomfortable. And so, like, he had somewhere around, like, 20, 30 hamsters before he managed to, like, sort them all by gender properly. And, you know, not have any more babies. And he was trying to, like, foist them upon pretty much our entire class. I don't think it worked. I certainly was not, like, I wasn't down for it. I was moving. But it was, it was kind of horrifying. That's also when I learned never to buy pets generally from pet stores because they do not have any quality control. Anyway, this gives me time to come up with a cover story. What do you think of my secret evil twin did it? Uh, Sam, did you tell your parents that you got detention? No, my mom already knows by now. Is she psychic? Oh, Mike, you. If my mom were psychic, I'd get in so much trouble all the time. No, she's, she's Mrs. Wieners. Mrs. Wieners is your mom? Yeah, when she gets home after the staff meeting, I'm going to be in so much trouble. So sorry. It's not your fault. Why do you think Bruce did this to us? I don't take it personally. He's just a bad loser who decided to ruin my life. You're right. First the ban, then detention. What next? What's next? Summer school? Oh, goo. What did we do to deserve this? This is the worst day of my life. I'm pretty sure Jacob has it worse than any of us. Jacob, I almost forgot Jacob. You're right. Poor Jacob. I wonder what happened. What if he fell down a well and got hurt or was kidnapped? I'm sure he's... What if he's being experimented on? Or what if he was killed? Listen, Sam, he's probably completely fine. We just don't know. You really think so? Yeah, I do. I bet wherever he is, he's safe and sound and maybe even happy to get some time alone. Oh, that's good. I was really worried there for a minute. We should still be a tiny bit worried. Just the right amount of worried. We still need to find him. Bet you already looked for him and didn't find anything. That doesn't mean we should stop. I found his cards. That's a clue, sort of. Even if we found a really good clue, the grown-ups would never ever listen to us. We're only kids, remember? Ah, uh, you're right. And yeah, that is Greedo. And... Nia Nub and probably Luke. I think it's Nia Nub. I don't know. Anyway, hey, 
if we can't help, and we're all doomed soon anyway. Want to play some Power Pets? Sure, why not? Game. So let's edit deck, maybe. What do we get rid of? Honestly, let's get rid of Cat. In favor of Fake Blood Frenzy. It's a really good way to get my mind off everything. Exactly. Nothing like a nice, relaxing game of Power Pets. I'm gonna have to go out and buy, like, a deck or two of Magic the Gathering cards just so Shell and I can actually have a match at some point. She'd probably like that. Oh, shoot, we've got the Gloodle Zapper combo right off the bat. That's a... that's a good feel. Uh, of course, there's Snowball. So we should probably toss the Invertus first. Oh, and it's got Swarm, too. Ouch! Uh, Boneless? This is a, a bit of a roughy. Because, yeah, his Swarm minions are particularly... Oh. And he just wrecked it, of course. Uh, let's see. We just do Pincher? I'm just gonna do Pincher. Nerf the nerf the snowball. Oh, I can't even kill snowball. Wow, this got out of hand fast. Mega. Okay. What do we do? I mean, we could try Dogzilla. It might just die. I'm gonna go for it if it survives awesome. Okay, and I can give Dogzilla plus 2-2. Two, two, which pisses everything else right off, question mark? Or, oh no. When that thing died, it gave everything else a boost. Well, that's not a good sign. Oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah, I lose. Wow. Recommend Hero Forge instead of Magic the Gathering. Shell does not like Hero Forge, mainly because I have a really, really strong Hero Forge deck, and uh, she's never beat it, and that's never very fun. Okay, this is a much better setup. Because we can probably toss out Zapper, and then Thicket Basilisk. I'd like to throw out the Gloodle, but this will be fine. Cripes. Okay, good. Didn't go for Zapper. Okay, let's get Thicket Basilisk out. That is a beefy Basilisk. Okay, that's exactly what I need. I'm gonna... Oh, I can't kill... I can't kill Pibbles. Start of your turn to deploy a 1-1 minion with charge. Oh. I mean, that's kind of okay. Okay, let's keep buffing the Basilisk for a second. What else do we have? I've got four, so let's get out the Invertus and Gloodle. But my other thing with uh, Magic the Gathering versus Hero Forge is Magic the Gathering, the one thing that it really has like going for it comparatively, damn it. Oh, wow. Mega. That's, okay, good. I was gonna say that scaled out of control in kind of a really bad way, but of course it did. Okay, at least Zapper is kind of okay. Uh, gonna get Spite Spores and Hexadog out. I'm gonna hit the Floofer Swarm. Unfortunately, I think it's probably gonna... Oh god, he has two Power Risers? 
But yeah, the Floofer Swarm is gonna probably kill my Zapper, maybe. Okay, we're kind of fine. Because I've got one chonky Dogzilla. I'm gonna kill that. Okay, so all of my min all of his minions have charge, which is scary. Okay, so what is oh shit. Okay, uh Magic the Gathering has kind of a visual and setting that Hero Forge does not. Hero Forge has some like neat looking creatures, kind of. But that's kind of the extent of it. Uh, let's see. I'll go for this. Uh, oh, and let's buff the Gloodle. Just keep the Gloodle alive. Uh, Hero Forge has neat looking creatures, but like the established lore and setting isn't quite there. Oh god, that got out of control fast. And he didn't attack me with all of them for some reason. I'm not sure why, because he probably would have killed me. I'm cleaning up. Good. Good practice for tomorrow's detention. That was a rough deck to come across. Oh, well, time to go home. You gone already? Yeah, I think my parents would lose it if I didn't come home from school today. That makes sense. I'm just scared of when my mom gets home. She'll—it'll be all right, Sam. She can't ground you forever. Sure about that? 